Do you know why the U.S. wants to separate Xinjiang from the rest of China? Because Xinjiang's location is way too important geopolitically. Though so here, China can bring something to the entire Eurasia that some U.S. politicians scare the most. Peace. Let me explain why. First, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, located in northwest of China, connects China with Central Asia. Xinjiang shares borders with eight countries. Mongolia, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. Xinjiang wasn't just a key hub in the Asian Silk Road. It's also a key gate for the current Belt and Road Initiative to expand westwards. It will connect East Asia, Central Asia, West Asia, and Europe. This is the region that the US government and several Western countries have been spending billions of dollars in the past decades to sponsor terrorism, wars, and instabilities. The textbook Divide and Conquer strategy. Because Eurasia is too big, if they unite, they will be too strong. And that is threatening for the US to maintain its exceptional position in the world. In other words, hegemony over the world. However, China's Belt and Road Initiative are bringing infrastructure and economic development to this region. China-Europe railways go through here. Billions of dollars of trades taking place at the ports in Xinjiang. And this economic development will raise the standards of people living in this region. And when people are much better off, there will be no reason to participate in wars and terrorism. So the US came out with a plan. Hmm, how about we support separatism and divide Xinjiang from China? In the 1990s, this political analyst named Graham E. Fuller, who served both in the National Intelligence Council and CIA, wrote a report called The Xinjiang Problem. In this report, he was teaching his fellow politicians and scholars how to play the Uyghur card and stoke separatism among Uyghurs to destabilize and contain China. If you don't believe my words, how about listening to the words of retired U.S. Army Colonel Lauren B. Wilkerson himself? He used to serve as the Chief of Staff to the U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell. The one I spent 31 years in, the military. Here is what it has decided for Afghanistan. I bet you don't know this either. We're in Afghanistan as we were in Germany post-World War II. That is for at least a half a century. It has nothing to do with Kabul and state building, nothing to do with fighting the Taliban or proving that we can reconcile with the Taliban, and nothing to do with fighting any terrorist group, because it is the only hard power the United States has that sits proximate to the Central Base Road Initiative of China that runs across Central Asia. If we had to impact that with military power, we are in position to do so in Afghanistan. And second reason we're there is because we're cheek and jowl with the potentially most unstable nuclear stockpile on the face of the earth in Pakistan. We want to be able to leap on that stockpile and stabilize it if necessary. And the third reason we're there is because there are 20 million Uyghurs, and if the CIA has to mount an operation using those Uyghurs, as Erdogan has done in Turkey against Assad, there are 20,000 of them in Idlib, in Idlib in Syria right now, for example. That's why the Chinese might be deploying military forces to Syria in the very near future to take care of those Uyghurs that Erdogan invited in, well, the CIA would want to destabilize China, and that would be the best way to do it, to foment unrest and to join with those Uyghurs in pushing the Han Chinese and Beijing from internal places rather than external. Unfortunately for the U.S., their plan to separate China is failing. All 56 ethnic groups in China will love and support each other, will unite and hold on to each other like pomegranate seeds. And we will unite with the rest of the world to build a community with a shared future for all mankind. Hey, have you signed up to my weekly newsletter yet? I've created a weekly newsletter on Substack. If you prefer reading news, if you prefer reading news about China and other international pressing issues, if you want to look beyond the mainstream talking points, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. You will have your news delivered to your email. Do you want to be a content contributor as well? If you want to get your articles, your stories, your perspectives being published, let me know. Here is my email box, jjnewsletter at hotmail.com. Let me know. If you prefer watching short videos, you can find me on TikTok. My name on TikTok is I am Li Jingjing. If you prefer interacting, discussing with people from all over the world, you can find me on Reddit. My subreddit name is News with Jingjing. If you prefer watching long videos, you can always stay here on YouTube. And you know I'm very active on Twitter as well, right? I will put the links of all my platforms in the description. I've been working as a journalist in China for more than 10 years now. I report stories related to China and also other international issues. 
But voices like mine are often being neglected, censored, or even attacked by Western mainstream media. I don't know. Maybe one day, these Western companies probably want to erase me from their platforms. So it's very important that you subscribe me on multiple platforms, so you can always find me. Thank you so much for supporting me for such a long time. See you next time.